Hola, me my man, man here. Me here today to talk about stuff that I've got from various places. Me going to do this in several takes, in several days, in several outfits, several uh, times of day. Right now it's about 9.15 a.m. I've been recording for about an hour with various takes because this is like the billionth take and uh, had no success due to various problems, whether it be the mic not working properly or whether it be me just up constantly you know how it goes with youtube if you're a youtuber like myself although i am a failing one funny that anyway without further ado let's get started with the first thing i have to show you this thing is from aliexpress funny enough i shop other places besides timu um yep it's a uh freaking two by three by three now funny enough this two by three by three i keep wanting to say two by two by three but it's two by three by three it's made by the same people who made my two by two by three as well as the uh mega Minx that I own. I think it's like Shang Shao or something like that. And basically, uh, I can't solve this thing. I literally just took it apart and put it back together because I was scrambling it in between recording. But I've gotten pretty close, but uh, not quite all the way there yet. It's a modified 3x3. Three three. I think someday I will figure it out. I think part of the problem is you can kind of like uh, transmogrify it or I guess transform it a little bit is what I meant to say by doing this, which I think is kind of cool, but it kind of messes up the style of solving that I'm used to with stuff that I can solve if you know what I'm saying. The 2x2 two two is pretty easy because there's not a whole lot of factors into it. Same thing with the Skew or the Dino Cube or like the Ready Cube. Th that stuff I can solve pretty easily because it's not too complex. But with that extra added layer with the 2x3x3, two three three, it makes it quite hard to solve. Mainly I spot cubes that I can't solve just to fidget around with. Speaking of fidgeting around with, here's something I actually did get from Timu. It is something that I, I used to fidget around with. Um, It's a UFO style uh, fidget toy slash massage thingamajig. It's made out of ebony wood. It's it's a type of wood that is uh, very nice to the touch. It's black. You can barely see what it actually looks like due to the way the camera is. But it's a nice uh, nice wooden fidget toy. Has a little bit of a hitch in it. I have put some wood polish on it, and that did definitely help, as well as through just finger grease from using constantly. Yep, it's a great fidget toy. It's something that I use quite constantly. I brought it on many a road trip, and I was also listening to music on these headphones, which you would know about if you actually watched my most recent shorts. I made two shorts about my audio and video setup, which you may be thinking, Matt, you forgot something, didn't you? Which, uh, yeah, you're like probably thinking like, why, why is Matt in such high resolutions? Because I got a new webcam. I got a Allure Tech 2K HD camera that has autofocus, which I'm sure you've been noticing throughout this video. And I'm actually uploading this video in 1080p, but I'm actually recording this video segment right here in a 2K um, 4x3. The actual resolution with those backgrounds right there adds up to about an integer scale between 2K. I'm downscaling all of this through the length Kazos method, I don't know how to say that, uh, through OBS, which I think will produce a much higher quality video in the long run. Speaking of stuff from my uh, shorts, I also got this windscreen right here through Timu. And uh, this is actually being uh, put on top of an already existing pop filter. Basically it helps me to wear when I go like this. It doesn't peak the mic, so that's probably the uh, main purpose of that if I were to hazard a guess. Let's get a little sidetracked and I'll talk about Timu for at least a little bit longer. Let's talk about something I got from Goodwill. It's the Super Mario Galaxy official soundtrack. This does not come with the uh, little manual that comes with it, so no manual squad hype moment for this one. I think it might have been stolen or maybe it was not there to begin with. Maybe the guy who donated it lost it. I don't know. I was able to rip that CD to my computer and get it in beautiful flat quality. And I'm listening to it in my car, which does not have a CD player now because my old car did and my new car does not. But I'm listening to it through my FLAC uh, upload to my uh, phone. By the way, speaking of my phone, I bought this uh, SD card, micro SD card adapter with USB Type-C and USB because I upgraded the SD card on my uh, phone from 256 to 512. And I'm listening to Mario Galaxy and various stuff that I've been getting through... Uh, legal means which uh, i'm sure you can gather from where I exactly i got them from my background if you're in the know you know and i also got um another soundtrack through a switch game that i bought and that switch game is although it is an mp3 320 kilobits which i'm not exactly the biggest fan of it's a uh, ori the collection i'm not going to show you the code that i got from this video game because i don't want to you know freaking lose that ability to download that code but i did get some art card hi pew 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 pew, pew. don't look like putting too much effort 
effort into that. It's not that hype, let's be real. But um, I got this uh, from uh, eBay for about 30 something bucks. I've been looking for an excuse to buy it for a very long time. It comes with Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisp. I've not played Ori in the Will of the Wisp. I've just played Ori in the Blind Forest because I want to play them in order. But I do like the Metroidvania style game that it is. And I do like it quite a bit. I do like the visuals. I do like the audio. And uh, I've been skipping the story because I'm a, you know, lizard brain boy. I like to skip non-lizard brain stuff. And the other game that I got for the Switch is a game that I ended up buying through pre-order because I canceled my strictly limited game. Uh, the Darius first one that I've been posting about on my uh, community tab. If you want to look at that, I'll tell you the whole story on that tab. Anyway, I canceled that as well as I sold the previous Darius first game. I bought Hebe Ricky 2, although it's known as Euphoria the Saga 2. This is a sequel to a long time NES game, one of which I do not own, but I might own at some point because City Connection is coming out with a uh, NES port that looks pretty damn cool. It's about $8.99 on Switch. It's coming out very soon. I'm assuming in tandem with this, although a little bit delayed. Uh, this is the Japanese copy. No manual, sadly enough. But uh, yeah, this game is sort of a uh, Yoshi's Woolly World slash Yoshi's Crafted World slash Kirby's Epic Yarn slash, you know, just basically a crafted cutesy style, but in the style of a Kirby game, but well, much harder than that. And it's kind of like Little Samson as well, where basically you switch between characters and some characters have certain advantages and some characters have certain disadvantages and you switch between them to uh, give benefits in certain situations. I will say this much, I do love Sunsoft quite a bit. They were beautiful developers, honestly. The way they uh, developed games was a master class in uh, NES development. And I'm glad to see that a, a sequel to a game that nobody got to experience in the West because it only came out in certain parts of Europe and Japan is coming our way. I love that shit. Let's continue on the Switch train and talk about something that I had to replace. Um, my left Joy-Con, it was having troubles pressing on the left button that you use in certain gameplay mechanics, so I decided to replace it with a Gully Kit Switch pulse sensing joystick for Joy-Cons right here. And now one of them is already in the Joy-Con that I replaced. I didn't do the other Joy-Con because that one has not been tampered with. It, it, I've not uh, messed with it. I've not taken out the Y the Y bit screws, nor have I replaced anything of the sort. I might replace it if it ever goes bad, the uh, joystick in there. Now I did have to calibrate it once, but uh, if you look right here, that's the that's the regular Joy-Con. This is the one with the modified one. And it has a nice rubber feel that I really like quite a bit. And uh, I did it, like I said before, I did have to calibrate it once, but once it got calibrated, it works just fine. Hopefully it is actually Hall Effect and will last quite a while, who knows? I mean, Gully Kit isn't exactly the most reliable for that, you never know, but either way presses down and that's the most important part i made sure not to get some cheap chinese knockoff because i wanted something that was actually going to last quite a bit longer Let's move along and talk about something that I actually got from Timu. We're going back to it now. Funny that. There are drumsticks. There are drumsticks. I am not a drummer myself, but I do enjoy air drumming quite a lot. I enjoy twiddling them around quite a bit. I also like drumming things that aren't drums, you know, throughout the various parts of my house. I just enjoy using this as a fidget toy in general. They're pretty nice quality. They're pretty cheap on Timu. And I'm pretty damn happy with this and the way it turned out. Finally, there's two more things that I got from Timu. Actually, uh, there's three more things in general, but there's two things I got from Timu. There's the Pokemon Meow! pin that I got from Timu. It's a sort of anime quality uh, pin that has a sort of silly and uh, aesthetic. Uh, the, uh, the Timu says it's for directly from Takara Tomi, but I know that's a freaking lie, but I don't mind because it's actually a pretty nice quality regardless of if it's official. And uh, I'm not going to compliment on that, but I have got a compliment on this one. The uh, Chica Slate Circle sort of pin that can be found in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which is, uh, you know, Nintendo and uh, Legend of Zelda. And uh, it, it's actually not too bulky. It's pretty nice uh, quality pin that I do enjoy quite a bit. And that's probably the last pin I'll have for a while because I'm quickly running out of room in that freaking uh, pin board right there. And finally, when it comes to stuff that I got from various places, it's freaking Mario Kart eight amiibos that is and uh this one has a, an amiibo that i've already owned at some point that being toon link but other than that every single card was used to unlock costumes for mario kart 8 not the animal crossing one because i do own animal crossing amiibos but you can actually see some on that pin board those cards actually are amiibo um anyway i, I used those on uh the uh, mario kart 8 deluxe cart that i own to be able to unlock the animal crossing costume but other than that i used the rest of these to unlock every single costume except for daisy because that 
one is not included. Now funny enough, the eBay seller that I bought this from actually did have a listing that was cheaper. Funny enough, I should have bought that, but uh, that's no big deal. The only, the only thing I will say about this, the case that you have to uh, open it with is very tight and very hard to get open. You know, I struggled quite a bit to get it open as you saw right there. Sometimes I struggle even more. I kind of got lucky there. And I think that's basically all I got to say about that. Nailed it. Beep, 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 beep. Before we move on, I want to give some RIPs and some stuff that has since passed since the last time I've seen you. Obviously, this is a new chair, which you would have known by my shorts So my old chair that I've had through pretty much most of my videos. And that finally is now wrestling pepperoni that, uh, that broke. Um, it fell underneath me, and it's probably comical and funny when I fell, but is no longer with us, so rest in pepperoni to that. As well as rest in pepperoni to the uh, $40 IEMs that uh, I stepped on uh, twice, and I had to super glue various times, but eventually it just gave out, and I had to throw them away, which is money well spent in my opinion. And uh, as well as RIP to uh, my speakers, my old pair of speakers and my Yamahas that I got off of Reverb. Uh, those things got, were kind of shit to begin with. They had problems clipping when you uh, turned up, turned them up really high. I think like I have speakers I have sound engine uh, two pluses that have Bluetooth and are pretty nice but they don't have an auxiliary out but I'll make do you know anyway RP to those speakers they basically uh, started um, no matter what I plugged them into started giving me feedback which was awesome and finally you may not know these uh, headphones these are uh, cost uh, Bluetooth headphones they're actually pretty nice they're not as nice as the headphones that I own this, these were my mom's. I say were because uh, the Bluetooth, whenever you use the Bluetooth, all of a sudden uh, it would just give you the uh, left speaker as, and they wouldn't give you any sound in the right speaker. When I plug it in through auxiliary, it works just fine. So I guess they're now mine and I guess RIP to its Bluetooth capability. So uh, Godspeed to all you broken uh, electronics. Yeah! Hey, what's up? I'm back for another part of the video. Um, you may notice that I'm off to the side, and that's because I have a unique format for this part of the video. It's gonna be a slideshow, funny enough. So let's start off with the first picture that I have to show you. Who's that handsome guy right there? Why, it's me! You may be noticing that I'm wearing these, but instead, it's right there. Yep, they're the uh, Garfield Softies, and you may be wondering, why are they not on the AKGs? They do not fit on the AKGs, and I couldn't have known that, because there's not a whole lot of information about Garfield Softies on the the internet. I said a guess, basically. So yeah, how do they feel? Well, on my head, when it's hot, they're cool, and when they're cool, they're hot. It actually says what it does on the box, and it's true. Uh, they don't affect the sound quality that much, but when it comes to the negatives, I will say the sort of uh, little fibers come off super easily, and it doesn't exactly fit very well on the headphones. They don't exactly stick very well to them, but they're pretty nice for what they are. The next part of the video, if you look right here, right there, You'll notice that it's the front of my computer case, which I don't typically get to show because I'm obviously using the computer to record this video. So uh, let's show you all the stickers that I have on this computer, including the new ones that I just got. First and foremost, we have this Best Buy sticker right here. It says, remember, turn your computer off before midnight on 1231.99. That's because of, ooh, Y2K, the Y2K bug. I remember the Y2K bug very well because by the time it was uh, supposed to happen, I was only two years old. But I do remember uh, computers that uh, we had at home having that sticker on there. You probably bought the computer before then, you never really took it off. Not to mention I'm a frequent user of Best Buy and I thought, might as well preserve a relic of Best Buy on my actual computer that I own because I thought it'd be silly. By the way, I'm not very happy with uh, Best Buy at the moment because they're stopping uh, production, uh, or at least they're stopping sale of physical media, which I'm not exactly cool with. But eh, who cares? They'll be gone by the time I'm in my 30s. The next sticker I have to show you is a Sound Blaster sticker. And this Sound Blaster sticker is something you would find on very classic computers uh, of the 90s. And believe it or not, I actually own a Sound Blaster on my computer, which is why I felt the need to put it on, you know, my computer case. It's actually sort of a gold sort of faux metal sort of aesthetic. It's pretty nice. Next up is this Eastward sticker and on the surrounding stickers around the uh, Kirby sticker are also Eastward. It came in my physical copy of Eastward, which I'm assuming I will put somewhere on screen where you can watch the video in which I show off my copy of Eastward, as well as uh, some of the other stickers you'll see on this case coming from other games. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty nice quality stickers. They, they've lasted quite a while now. I don't know how long in particular. I'm sure you can figure it out based on when the video came out in which I showed the actual game. And finally, we have the Kirby Scorpio sticker. Now this actually took a long ass time to get into my house because this came as part of the uh, Needy Girl Overdose, uh, Signalis, and Little Witch Nobita, or is it Nobeta, that uh, came to my house from PlayAsia. This is back when I, me and PlayAsia were not on good terms. 
This is a very nice quality sticker. It was kind of expensive too, but I needed it in order to get over the $100 mark so I could get free shipping. But I'm probably not going to use that feature again because of the fact it took so damn long to receive said package. Moving on, we have the left side of my uh, computer case. You may be noticing it's see-through. I'll tell you why. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to tell you what each sticker on the case is with my fingers. First up, we have this, this, this this and basically all throughout we have always awakening and always legacy stickers from the alwa collection on switch uh, i showed that off in a previous video as well and that's something i put all throughout this side of the case here's mario he came part of some generic pack i don't remember when i got it strictly limited grr i hate them yeah they came as part of one of my orders same with the super rare one as well as this super rare one right here this is a play asia sticker which i'm surprised is still on the actual case because those stickers are not very sticky at all same thing with this one this is also PlayAsia, but this is a PlayAsia exclusive uh, sticker, as well as this one. They came with my physical copies, which I've also shown in videos past. This is a Shark Robot sticker. I got this from ordering from, of course, Shark Robot, which I think it was actually the pins that you see in the backgrounds where I got that sticker. This is a Gundam sticker. I'm not much of a fan of Gundam, but it came with one of my packages, so I thought might as well put it on my uh, computer. This Pikachu one, I might have got it at my local video game slash DVD uh, store in the area. I won't dox myself. Same thing with this uh, Bell Sprout. I also got that from that store, I believe. And that's that for that side of the computer. Let's move on to the other side of the computer. You may notice on this side of the computer, first and foremost, is the shot stickers that I got from getting the COVID vaccine. There's no strictly limited. Grr, I hate them. That's Redbubble. I'm never using them ever again. But that sticker's super old, so at least their stickers are good. But yeah, the COVID shot, COVID shot, COVID shot, COVID shot. Yeah, I mean, I got the, the two initial shots as well as the booster, but I'm not getting anything past that because honestly, I don't need it. And uh, I mean, it might save my life for all I know, those, those shots that I got initially, because I think I did get COVID at some point. And I am an overweight man, so, you know, I could definitely use to lose a few pounds. Moving on, we have Kafagrigus. I don't want to say the F slur because the F slur isn't the name. And another one, I got that through a uh, service that I uh, ordered from during the pandemic. Uh, it's He's making a, a praying symbol and he's also making the OK symbol as well, which 4chan might tell you otherwise what that symbol means. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get demonetized even though I'm not monetized. <laughs> uh, here's the swordfish from Cowboy Bebop, otherwise known as Cabbage Beep Boop. Shout out to Falero, rest in peace. Here's some Sonic uh, stickers as well as as, uh, that's a Pac-Man and Sonic, as well as Mega Man and Mario. Classic Sonic, Silver, and that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I got from getting a haircut. That's a unicorn, I received that from a package that I got. I think it was a game. That was also from the same website that I ordered that uh, Kif Yes, it's from the same site. This is also from uh, a package that I got, as well as uh, this one as well. And that's all I got to show for today. But wait, it's not the end of this segment, because I forgot a few stickers to show from my case. My computer case, that is. That's a super rare sticker. In fact, it's from a super rare game that I don't even own anymore. That is Tails. That is Mighty the Echidna. This says Apple Sucks. I got it from a legitimate Apple sticker, and I put sucks on it because I'm a child. By the way, I should probably say, this is from Sanrio. This is Ryakuma, or is it Rilakuma? I don't know how to say his name. And he's riding a fish that he's also catching. And those are two hamsters, I don't know their name, but they're also from Sanrio. And this one, this one, and this one were all from the same Switch game. I should probably say that much as well, the one I got in the mail. Next part coming your way. Hi guys, it's me, Mad McMahon again. You may be wondering why am I to the left side again? Because I got more stickers. But where did I get those stickers? Where well, one of them was from a previous game that I already own called Pocky and Rocky. But the other one is from Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Yes, I got this on Switch in between the last recording session. I have played a little bit of it through the PC, through my brother's Steam share. But what I played so far on this Switch copy is just about the same. PC version doesn't look too much different. And it plays great. I love it. It's freaking awesome. Awesome. And the other thing that I got before I show you the stickers, the next thing I got is a CD. Yes, it's Damien Urado's The Shape of a Storm. The album is called In the Shape of a Storm, not just The Shape of a Storm. Back to your regularly scheduled programs. I can't say that shit. It's a freaking uh, indie album, an indie, indie folk album by Damien Urado. It's pretty calming, pretty relaxing, pretty mellow. You know, the songs themselves are pretty chill, but also pretty meaningful and impactful. I would say this is something i would i would recommend picking up i actually went to karma records believe it or not it was kind of cool going to a cd shop seeing what it was like before eventually they all go away and uh, i got it for about 10 bucks which i'm pretty happy about and uh, let's go on to the stickers first we're starting with the left side 
And you may notice there's a Pocky and Rocky sticker. There's a Pocky and Rocky sticker. This is Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That's Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That's Pocky and Rocky. Pocky and Rocky all the way down here. And so on and so forth. Let me show you the other side. Oh, and by the way, the Pikachu sticker as well as, uh, I believe, uh, the tail sticker in our Rest and Pepperoni. As you can see, there's more uh, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Pocky and Rocky. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Pocky and Rocky right here. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk right here, where my knuckle is. And uh, Pocky and Rocky again. Yeah, there's multiple logos. There's three in total on the freaking case. And hopefully this is the last time uh, that I freaking show you this godforsaken uh, format of videos because I am getting, quite frankly, kind of sick of it. So anyway, uh, that's all I gotta say for this session. See you in the next session. So I guess I'm not sick of the whole sticker format after all because I got stickers to show you. I got the whole last decor of my room to show you. I know you can see a majority of it in the background, but there's more to see, believe that. As well as I got a whole new ass console. I got a PS4 original. I know it's not new, but it's new to me. Yep, I am now a Sony fanboy, I guess, based on the logic of owning a PS4. Um, yeah, and let's start off with the controller that I got with it. Just your average uh, black launch model controller. Pretty nice, huh? And uh, when it comes to games, I got two games at uh, my local uh, game store, and I gotta dox myself. I got Kingdom Hearts uh, HD 1.5 plus 2.5. 5 remix that's a mouthful i know and i've played uh the first part of kingdom hearts 1 and i'm loving replaying it you still know it as a kid as well as kingdom hearts 2 and uh i never really played kingdom hearts 2 but i did play the beginning of kingdom hearts 1 quite a bit and it's quite nostalgic although like a dumbass i get lost super easily because i skipped the story I also got Tearaway. I've not played it yet, and I'll tell you how that goes when I actually get to it. Uh, maybe the next recording session, who knows. And uh, while I was at my brother's house, which is who I got the PS4 from, was doing his taxes. Uh, you've actually seen him in a few of my earlier videos. His name's Patrick. I got a, uh, a plush that uh, his wife uh, got from GameStop as a pre-order that wasn't sold. Uh, this is actually to a game, The Cruel King and the Great Hero, that I own. That uh, I previously Emmett cheated up, I got a new one. I'm gonna be putting that on uh, that shelf right there. And I'm not gonna be putting it on the bed because otherwise Emmett's gonna chew it all up. And that's no good. Real quick, I gotta redo this part because uh, the recording uh, corrupted it. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, as you can see, right about here is the shock mount for my microphone. As you can also hear, if I go like this, it's pretty quiet, ain't it? I mean, if I bump it around, it's not gonna sound as loud, so pretty sick. Anyway, uh, that's all I gotta say for now. Next part, coming soon. More like now. Anyway, let's move on to the main event, that being the stickers as well as the decor. First, let's start out with the front part of my computer case. And you may notice there's a new sticker. It's right here. And uh, it's actually a sticker that I already own from my Chon Homie CD. I decided to put it on my computer case. Isn't that cool? Next up is the left side of my computer case. And you may notice there's Wario, as well as a uh, hot lady, a uh, hot chica lady from uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Don't remember her name. Uh, Pura, Pura is her name, I believe. Uh, or maybe that's, maybe it's Pura. Kind of sounds like poo poo. Who knows? Yeah, she's freaking banging in that game. So I got a little bit of a hoarding on main situation going on with that sticker. Next up is some posters you may notice that cyberpunk poster i got that from uh patrick uh his wife got it from gamestop it's a thing that never uh was meant to be actually bought it was a promotional thing as well as that skyward sword thing was a promotional thing next to that is uh my pin board which you've seen plenty of times throughout uh my videos it's in the background right above my head right next to it and you may also see this in the uh camera it's a closer look at the stuff on top of my dresser. First up is a little collage of Emmett, Bella, and uh, Phoebe. Uh, yep, Emmett's pictures are from when he was a baby, by the way. Uh, he is actually a, um, a Pitbull and Rottweiler mix, funny enough. So uh, don't fuck with us if uh, you know where I live. And next to that is an ancient ass poster I got from a Sega Saturn game back when I went to Sega Saturn. It's Panzer Dragoon. And, uh, and I totally devalued a Sega Saturn game by taking out the poster and putting it up on my wall. Next up is a Kirby poster, and believe it or not, it's actually right there, that direction where you can't see. It's Kirby in the Forgotten Land. This is also a promotional poster that my uh, brother's wife uh, got 
from GameStop. Uh, otherwise, they would have thrown it away. So, again, thanks to uh, Kayla for hooking me up. Moving on, this may be a little bit hard to see, but it's a Prince poster as well as uh, a Jeff Goldblum pillow, which you've seen many times throughout my video. The Prince poster I got at a local fair. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, I went to the state fair and got myself a... Uh, a uh, little painting of Prince because I'm a big Prince fan. That's my dad is, and I like my dad quite a bit. Now, directly in front of me, something you would never see normally. I think that, I think you can actually see it in one of the videos I've shown in the past, but that's a pretty outdated version of it. Right above here, uh, right about there, is uh, a bunch of uh, cards. Uh, some are limited run. Some are super uh, deluxe, which is a Japanese version of like limited run. Um, and as well as there's a, speaking of devaluing, I took out the poster from my The by Trico CD and taped it to my wall. There's some uh, strictly limited postcards as well as some custom photos based on AI of Hilary Duff and uh, Kazuma Kiryu, as well as a clown from the Behemoth. I've had that poster for a long ass time. On the right side of that clown is a bunch of Pokemon cards, a bunch of super rare cards, as well as a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, as well as a uh, poster I got at five below and the cover of a crash gba game uh, manual that i cut off yet again devaluing another game or cd is that a hit am i done for now i think we're done for now i can't believe we're doing this again but we have another rest and pepperoni electronics section because believe it or not that controller that i just got that i showed in the last section as well as my previous controller that i owned for ps4 i broke both of them uh, i'm not gonna go on exactly how i broke both of them one broke and i tried repairing it and the other got broken too and how i'm not gonna say but that's fun, you know? But as a replacement, I got this controller and it only cost $64. So fuck you, Biden, and your shitty ass economy you've given us in the US. But hey, at least I got a game and this one was relatively cheap. It was, uh, or it is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Now I played this on Switch at the library briefly. Didn't really like it, mainly because the graphics weren't so good and also because I wasn't used to it. And I didn't really like this at first when I was playing on a PS4, but the more I got used to it, just like a real, you know, skateboard, you have to practice a lot in order to get really good. You know, it's like, you know, it, it, it slowly comes back to you, you know, because I often forget that the, you know, Tony Hawk's games that I played as a kid, you know, you had to get used to them and you had to boost the stats and whatnot, that you weren't going to be good at it right away, just like a real skateboard. Once I got into it, it felt just like, you know, the old games. And not to mention there's cheats. There's plenty of other stuff that uh, I do enjoy, you know, um, you can create your own skater, you can play as multiple other skaters besides Tony Hawk. Although I I will say um i don't like the fact that i have to download uh, a patch to get to 1.0 and then i have to download a 1.1 i'm not used to playstation so having to download more than one patch is kind of weird to me considering switch just handles it in one go and not to mention there's a lot more switch games that just have like the the base game on the cartridge and the ones that don't it's a lot more obvious whereas the one on the cover of this one was very small and hard to read which is awesome but uh that's typical activision for you Basically, I have a glorified DRM. And tune in for the final part, hopefully. See you soon. Funny enough, I forgot something. I always do in between these sessions. So Tearaway actually uh, is pretty good. I played the first chapter. Um, it's very in innovative, very, very fun, very quirky, and very much a media molecule game. I am very happy with it. I'm curious to see how the PlayStation Vita version differs. And overall, pretty good game. Um, and second of all, uh, the Tony Hawk's game I got at another local uh, shop that's down the street from the other shop this one sells cds and vinyls as opposed to just dvds and you know blu-rays on top of video games they're more of like an uh, an overall eclectic sort of me media nerdy kind of store they were able to give it to me for super cheap i got pay i paid about 12 bucks actually a little bit less you know i had like a one dollar uh cash back i got it for about like 11 something i want to say yeah that's that's all i gotta say about that let me stop saying that because that's like a forrest gump reference makes me sound a stupid sorry forrest you fictional character you i think you're stupid <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with that. Hello, welcome to the final part of the video. You may notice that we're back in uh, Broken Electronics Corner. 
These headphones still work, but the freaking headband uh, snapped off. I stepped on them, so aren't I a lucky boy? Um, anyway, uh, let's show you the first thing I got from my team order. It's a freaking Jeff Goldblum mouse pad. I had an old Jeff Goldblum mouse pad, but it was all crusty and gross, you know, from various things that I've spilled on my desk. This is a nice and uh, pretty one. I got it from uh, Timu for about three or four bucks. It's pretty good. Let me pause and get some pictures so I can show you the other thing that I got from Timu or Temu. Let's go. As you can see to my right, there is a computer chassis. Yes, my computer is now safe and secure underneath the chassis so I can move it about and also improve airflow. Um, and I'll show you the next picture of it. Here it is in the back. Uh, please don't mind little stains on my computer. I'm, I just think uh, in general, I'm a messy boy and I get stuff on it all the time. And finally, my face is covered but you see the side of it and you see all that room underneath the computer i will say this much that the computer is a little bit uh stout you know it's not as long so uh, it doesn't cover the entire length of the of the chassis but that's okay you know i got it from tamu for about 16 or 17 dollars roughly i mean the whole purchase was about 20 and not to mention i had about one one dollar worth of credit so it was probably around 15 16 about with the credit applied uh, maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less um and again i had to assemble it myself um i actually did a good job assembling it i got the width uh, of the chassis right pretty much first try the wrench they gave you to assemble the wheels on it was pretty much useless um i uh the only thing i really messed up during the process of building the chassis was that when i first put on the wheels there's two stoppable wheels they're supposed to be uh parallel to each other i had them like this Again, that was sort of annoying and I had to undo that and redo it. But once I did, I think the build quality is pretty good. I did a pretty good job assembling it. The only thing I have to get used to is that uh, it kind of slides around a bit in there. And so I have to make sure to keep it steady when I'm moving it, not to like jostle it about all willy nilly. Either way, that is all. This long ass video that's taken me forever to record all the parts is finally done. Uh, I love you all and goodbye, Mwah, bitch.